Hello. Can you see it? We are going to start. Okay. Thank you. Just before to start with Wire Demo Day, I'm Aleix Valls. For the ones who don't know, I'm the director of Four Years From Now. Just want to say thank you to all of you, to all the wonderful speakers that has joined us during these days, the awesome workshops that we have the pleasure to host. It has been really packed. All your attendees, all the exhibitors, all the sponsors, we overpassed the expectation of our first edition of four years from now. Now it's time to relax. Tomorrow, Mobile World Congress, hard day, and on Friday, I will relax, all the team will relax, and on Monday, let's work for next edition. Who knows, but most probably, yes. Thanks very much. We really appreciate all the comments that we have received from all of you. The feedback has been really positive, at least for me, maybe because, you know, I'm involved. Thank you again, and now, just will take five minutes of your time. I would like to welcome and to call to the stage the team because this has been a work of a lot of people and I would like to call them. Please clap your hands because they have done an excellent job. First, Adria Valla, responsible for content and for the nightmare to put all the schedule of the speakers' workshops together. <laughs> Second, the wonderful MC. Shankar Nair from Singapore, mathematician, and is, as you know, Why? the first time in his life doing MC. I hope it's not the last one. Shankar. And then everybody has said that is an awesome space, a wonderful workshops, <laughs> the Agora stage with the palettes, the picture with the prince was awesome the master of the production, Pep Salazar. <laughs> and now, this is not possible if we don't speak what happened. We have an awesome marketing and communication team. Andreu Castellano, Tatiana Viladumat. <laughs> Puloma Serra. Julia. Mark, Arnau, Adriana, the master of the social networks. And now, the responsible for registration, Alba, and PR and speaker relation, Lua. Thank you for all of your feedback. Thank you, team. It has been an awesome event. It has been awesome to work together. See you next year in Barcelona. Thank you very much. You. Now, Gary, your time. Let's wait a start.
Gracias. So, my name is Gary Stewart. I'm the director of White Spain, and I'd like to um, say welcome to everyone who has come to our first White Spain demo day. And I say it's our first White Spain demo day because we've had previous editions in either Barcelona or Madrid, but this is the first time that we've actually had only one demo day for all of the, the teams within Spain. So, give me, let me give you a bit of background as to how this all started. About one year ago, we received 1,500 applications for 20 slots in Barcelona and in Madrid. From those, those 1,500 applications, we chose about 40 teams that we presented to investors with only one question. Do you think the startup would be investment worthy within the next 10 months after being accelerated by WIDA? If the answer were yes, and we, then we, uh, sorry, if, actually if the startup received a majority of yeses from the judges, then they were allowed to come into uh, the WIDA Academy. And if the answer were no, or at least they couldn't convince a majority of the judges, then they weren't allowed to come into the Academy. But that was almost the easy part, because once they got in, the competition continued. First of all, we, did, we asked all of the startups to rank each other every two weeks. And from that ranking, we came up with a cumulative ranking of the startups that performed the best and executed the best over the last 10 months. We also then presented them before external juries and external judges and asked those judges to also rank the startups. And from that, then, we basically got 12 startups that you're going to see today. 12 of the 20 that entered are finally going to be able to pitch today. That doesn't mean that we don't think that the other eight aren't good enough, but we do think that these are the top 12 based on the rankings from their peers and also from the investors. And we think that they're in pretty good company because over the last 18 months, our startups have raised about $13 million in financing from international venture capitalists and business angels. So we think that's a pretty good start, but we actually want to go a lot farther. And that's the reason why we've invited a lot of the investors who are in the audience today. Um, according to what I've been told, the investors here today have more than about $2 billion that they could potentially invest with. So that's a pretty good number, and we hope that some of them will take out their pocketbooks and invest in our startups. And in fact, a lot of our startups have already received financing from investors, so we know that they're in pretty good, uh, pretty well on their way. So kind of as a microcosm of that, we're first going to start this event with a fireside chat. I'd like to bring to the stage Ronnie Willingstein and also Ahead Uhed Levy. These are two guys who, between them, have seen billions of dollars, so that's kind of always nice. Um, Ronnie sold his company, Untusel, um, to Cisco last year for about $475 million. Um, Ehud Levy is a managing partner of uh, Vertex Venture Capital. Uh, he's had lots of exits, lots of companies that have IPO'd and been sold. Probably one of the most famous that we all know is Waze, which was just sold last year to Google for $1 billion. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Rani and Enhud to the stage. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. It's great uh, to be here again, always in Barcelona, especially in the Waira event. For Rani, it's the first time, and we were back in, on stage. He told me that he really feels in the air the energy uh, of the people and the activity. So uh, really, uh, it's an amazing uh, experience for us. Thank you very much. Yep, I'm, I'm very excited to see it. It's a great thing to see so many people excited and so much energy in the air. Don't lose it, huh? <laughs> so uh, first I want to say uh, that I don't understand why I invited uh, Rani to join me to this event, uh, <laughs> because he did not invite me to invest in his company. Oh, wow. Never mind, but you did very well in ways, right? So. Uh... No, no complaints. Uh, I want to <laughs> say... Uh, <laughs> um, I want to say two words about what Rani uh, did, which is uh, really something quite unique in the, from the investment perspective. Rani started the company in 2008, raised uh, $6 million. He used only $3 million out of it and generated revenue of, of over $20 million and succeeded selling the company for $475 million after five years, four years. So uh, that is uh, something really unique. Now, let's start, uh, I'd like to ask you that, uh, like as any entrepreneur, I was entrepreneur also myself, 
you start a company, before you start even deciding the decision to start a company, it's a tough decision, especially with you that you had a successful uh, career at uh, ECI, one of the biggest telecom companies uh, in Israel. What, uh, what was on your mind? Why to make this uh, move uh, to, uh, to start a startup? Wow. It's a long way. I, uh, I worked for ECI for two years, and just before they fired me, just kidding, <laughs> I, I felt that I do something interesting, something that will excite me. And uh, I went to work for a mobile operator for a couple of months. And I still wanted more excitement. So I joined a founding team of another startup, a startup in uh, North America. And after two years, we sold it to ECI Telecom. So I worked for ECI Telecom twice. And then I worked for ECI Telecom two years, and then I, get ex I got excited again, and I want something new again. So we founded another company, which is still running, and that's more or less the circle. And then, and, and then we founded uh, Intercell, and at the end of the day, when you feel that you, when you really believe in something and you're mature enough, at the beginning, you have to be naive enough, and later on, you have to be mature enough to understand that this is a career path that you want to take, that you are going to bet your career on it. And you have to build the confidence in yourself that you can actually do it, and you have to form the environment, the, the trust of your uh, family and, and partners to actually make it happen. That's the, that's the point that uh, you should set your sails and, and go, go for it. Good. So you start a company. Actually, you did a very unusual uh, financing path to the company, uh, even including uh, the unheard of <laughs> way of financing uh, a company by generating profits. Mm. So this is something quite unique. Um, so can you share with us uh, what you did and uh, uh, from your experience? Yeah. Uh, we, started, uh, we started Intucell in uh, late 2008. We had uh, fantastic ideas. Uh, we thought we had great technology at the time. And uh, my gut feeling told me that we should try to build something valuable in the garage and we should go and try to sell it before we go to raise money. And we worked very hard, four guys in the garage, for uh, almost uh, more than a year until we got the point that we got a customer that was willing to pay for, for our uh, for our prototype, of course, he thought it. Of course, we told him it's a great product and it's ready for production and yada yada yada. But it was mostly lots of lines of codes wrapped with slides, haywire, duct tape, and hope. And uh, we were able to make the first deal when we were four guys in the garage around. Around it was at that time six hundred seventy thousand dollars with a local operator in Israel. Um, from that point, we felt that uh, what we have has value, measurable value. We can quantify the value. It has uh, some kind of pricing in, into it and so on. So, and later on, we kept focusing on the value. We continue cruising ahead. The next thing to happen, we're uh, naive, stupid, smart, I don't know how to call it. And we're around eight or nine people at the company. We decided to pitch to AT&T. We're talking about, uh, we developed a software that uh, basically it's an autopilot auto to optimize radio access networks, to optimize the uh, radios, the antennas, and the transmitter of the mobile network. And we pitched this story to AT&T. So it was a revolutionary approach that rather than providing recommendations to engineer, our software is actually monitor the network and make changes in real time on the fly. 
To make a long story short, in less than a year, we went through a crazy roller coaster, and we ended up with an order of $54 million in hand. At that time, we were a really big company. I think we were 19 or 18 guys at that point. Depends on how you time the actual uh, the contract sign or someone joining. So that was, uh, and from that point, uh, we were able to self-fund the company. And that's how we ended up with a single round of uh, financing. So for those of you who really think of uh, financing, don't lose that hope that you can finance it uh, your company wants. It can, be, it can really be done. Good. So you're telling us uh, it sounds very... Uh I would say uh, nice and uh, without any uh, distractions, but every uh, startup has its points of uh, low level that you feel that everything is uh, falling apart. Can you share with us kind of a moment that you felt that, okay, now whatever, all the effort that I put, um, all the time that I invested, everything is now going uh, to go away? and how you uh, overcome it? Oh, we have plenty of those times. Uh, I think one of the most representing times uh, uh, event was at the time that we deployed the software. We were able to convince uh, AT&T to let us run the software in, uh, in an area in, uh, near, um, near San Francisco in a small town uh, near San Francisco, uh, on the other side of the bay, and the results were okay. And then uh, my partner was, at the, uh, was working with the uh, radio engineering team of uh, San Francisco, heard that uh, there is a big event that at and is uh, preparing the network for, and he volunteered to help them to do it fully automatically so they don't need to do any manual optimization, and our software will do it for them. And uh, he gave me a call, and so he told me they are, uh, they are very excited about it. It's a very important event, and they want to make sure that the network is great, and da 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 And I asked him, okay, so what's going on? He said, well, I committed to it. So I asked him, okay, good, what's the event? And he said, it's, uh, uh, it's the uh, CEO of Apple, Steve Jobs, is about to announce the, uh, the new uh, innovation of uh, Apple at that time. Apparently, it was the last keynote of Steve Jobs in the Musconi Center in San Francisco. And he volunteered to do it all automatically, dynamically, blah, blah, blah. Whatever was, whatever was written on our slides. Not that we have all the code for that. And uh, of course, we worked very hard. We didn't have any other choice. It was this kind of uh, zero or hero things. And uh, two days before, we felt that uh, we're not going to do it. And we felt that we built such a huge ex expectation with the customer. And uh, we won't be able to make it. Apparently, we're able to, <laughs> to make it. And uh, results were very good, they were very excited. Some uh, guys uh, put on Twitter remarks that uh, this year the mobile network is better than the Wi-Fi and created huge impact on, uh, within AT&T and the analyst community about the performance uh, of the network and the potential of our solution. And that was one of them. We were really close to suicide almost. Good. Now, when you sell to large operators, I'm sure there are guys here from uh, Telefonica, um, it's very challenging, especially for a small uh, startup that requires a lot of uh, kind of improvisation. Um, can you share with us behind the scene, you know, what the, not what the, the operators see, but what you see behind and how you uh, manage to fulfill the promise that you, uh, that you tell the, the operator? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, 
you may, uh, for those of you who are trying to install uh, equipment or uh, to put servers in the operator's network or interconnect with the operator's environment, you probably know the hassle, uh, the challenges associated with that. We're trying to be as creative as possible. Actually, my partner, who's not here, is uh, the other side of town here right now. Uh, we went to a site survey in AT&T Switch before the installation of the equipment. And the idea was that we'll see the location and the, the uh, guy that runs the lab will say, okay, I understand what this guy wants. And apparently he was supposed to fill with us the forms and to run the process and open the firewalls and a process that takes a, a, rig, a, a very large operator uh, probably a couple of months until you get to the point that you have their server inst installed in a network. My partner, of course, uh, didn't, didn't want to accept it. It was uh, definitely unacceptable for him. So as soon as we entered the, uh, the switch room, he walked us to uh, the switch room and he said, well, we can fit here and there and so on. And then he said, uh, so my partner told him, okay, here is good. Tomorrow we are bringing the servers. The guy was shocked, hey, 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 it's AT&T. You cannot just bring your servers off the truck, plug it in, and you have to fill the forms, you have to uh, do the planning, to run their power, to run the internet connections, to configure the IP. So my partner tells him, no, 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 I will bring the servers, I will install it, I will run the cable, I will do the power, I will do this, I will do that. And the guy said, no, it's, it's, it doesn't, he was shocked, he, he never had it before. And he said, this is AT&T, we have engineering, we have planning, we have security. So my friend told him, you know, this is a very, very, very important project for AT&T. And he pointed at me and he said, this guy met Stanky. Stanky was the COO. And Stanky wants this project to move fast. First, I did meet Stanky a few months earlier in a sort of a speed dating thing. He wanted things to move fast, not necessarily our project. But it was uh, very close to the truth. So the... Then my, my partner told him, you know, we already ordered the servers. So we will bring the servers tomorrow. We'll put, we'll put it in your office, in the corner of the office, four big boxes. And when you'll have the approvals, you will call me. He had a very tiny office. If we, if we would put the boxes in his office, he couldn't do anything in his office anymore. So he, he re agreed that he will let us in and we'll just put the servers on a rack. Next day, we went, I don't know how, we were able to boat servers on a fly. My partner get in, uh, get in the room, put the server on the rack, and told the guy, just in case I bought, I, I bought uh, networking cables to see if they fit, and they fit, so we connected them. Then he told him, you know, I'll run the power, and he ran the power, and we have the server connected. Then we went, the guy was shocked. He said, okay, I, I don't know what, let's do it. Just disappear from my, from my uh, switch room. And my partner went to, back to the AT&T's offices, to the champion of the product, uh, to the pro to, of the project, and told him, the servers are installed. I just need remote access now. And the guy said, okay, I'm taking care of it. So my partner, Ido, sat in the corner Told him, okay, I'll, I'll wait. And he sat in the corner of the room and he said, I'm here, I have time, don't worry, I'm here until I'm getting the remote access set. So, this guy, was, his name was Clinton, he said, wait, 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 you cannot wait here. He said, no, 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 I have nothing else to do anyway. I'm not going to return to Israel. I'll sit here in this room, in this corner, until, in your office, until you'll have the the remote access, after, an, uh, after a, a day, 
My partner was certified as a contractor. He got a token. We got remote access. And it took us basically, in less than three days, that we were connected. So that was an incredible achievement for us to move ahead and to move fast. And we found out that if you insist on certain things and the customer appreciates the value, you get it. If you stick to the value, get it. We were told that nobody will ever let us have remote access to customers' network. And we said, no way. We need it. We must use it. We are not going to sleep in your facility. We have our own life. You have to trust us. And I think today we have remote access to almost all of our uh, customers today, this way or another. Don't lose it. Push it. <laughs> Don't lose this energy that I, uh, that I felt uh, there in the other room. Good. So, we, so last question. I see we are running out of time. Oh. So you mentioned the persistence and the can-do approach. Uh, what are maybe if just your recommendation, uh, like the three most important uh, uh, elements for factors for a startup to succeed from your experience and for maybe also from your mistakes? Team, make sure that you have the right partners around you. Don't hesitate to make the changes, the necessary changes. As soon as you feel in your gut that something is wrong, fix it. Don't wait. Make sure you have the best team. The second thing I would say, make sure that you are targeting a solid or a, a market that you understand and it has a sensible scale and sensible scale, volume, and so on. And the last thing, I would say, make sure that you understand that you build intimacy with the customers, close enough to understand what they need and what you offer, and make sure that you are actually addressing specific pains, specific needs. At the end of the day, think like you're selling medicines. And make sure that these medicines are addictive. Very good. Thank you very much, Rani. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you, everybody. Good luck. And all the best. Thanks, Ahud. Thanks, Rani. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.